Hi, I'm Jen Rogers at NASDAQ Market Site, and this is Breakthrough Economy. Today, we're taking a look at how AI is transforming the biotech industry and diving into the ways it's enabling cutting edge advancements in the oncology space. I'm here with Pana Sharma, CEO and president of Lantern Pharma. I just want to start off by taking a look at the history of biotech and AI. I mean, AI is transforming industries everywhere, grabbing headlines everywhere. People are paying attention, but we haven't actually heard heard that much about the impact it's having in the biotech industry specifically. So can you tell us a bit about the evolution of AI in the sector? It's been a rocket ship the last year, year and a half because of generative models. Now they're not making the massive impact in our industry yet, but we're able to now do a lot of things in cancer that were unheard of five years ago, or even three years ago. A, because of the horsepower of machines, B, the vast amounts of data that people are now sharing openly, and collaboratively, that wasn't done in science 10 years ago. And we have tremendous amounts of clinical and genomic and biomarker data from patient records that again, weren't accessible. You'd have to go around and hunt data and put it on storage devices. Now you can upload it to the cloud, you can share it, you can anonymize it. So vast, vast changes. And now the algorithms also used to be that you'd only have pockets of people squirreled away, like in Palo Alto and Cambridge, and maybe some parts in New York, and maybe in some universities that were creating these amazing algorithms. But now what we've been able to do in throughout drug development, and especially in cancer, is we're able to leverage all this great algorithmic development globally. And so all these pieces are now just going to fundamentally, I think, and usher in a new golden age of medicine because of AI. We're going to be able to develop drugs faster, more targeted, and most importantly, in a much more economically sound way. So let's talk about the impact, the real impact that we're going to be seeing in biotech. Have we started to feel it yet? When AI came about, we could put it all in the cloud. We didn't have to worry about corruption of data. We didn't have to worry about different formats. And we can now just select buttons to do basically not one or two analysis a day, but thousands in an hour. And so those are the two, I would say, barbells in drug dr development, the chemical space and the biomarker space. And those two are just get in, getting closer and closer together. Uh, and there's lots of overlaps, lots of really cool things that um, scientists and data people are doing. Our own team, half drug developers, molecular biologists, half, no, no half are data and software people. And that's the future of, of, of biotech. Uh, let's talk about what you're doing at Lantern Pharma, because recently you announced that you're going to leverage this proprietary AI platform, uh, Radar, Response Algorithm for Drug Repositioning and Rescue. And this is going to help you rapidly develop what you were talking about, these highly targeted cancer drugs. So can you walk us through how Radar works and how you've been successful so far? We went from a back of the on envelope idea for synthetic lethality, which is one of the mechanisms we model. We went from the back of the whiteboard, actually it wasn't a napkin, back of a whiteboard to going into human trials this year, less than three years, two and a half years. And so we know we've used the platform to rescue drugs. We use the platform to design new drugs, looking at different mechanisms. And then we do very important things what drug should we combine our drug with? Because as you know, many drugs, they have to work together, you know, multiple drugs. And so this kind of cocktail or combination approach is really important. We can model that in like record time. We can, in, you know, we can drum up a million instances of different drug combinations and run it overnight or over a weekend, which is unheard of. You couldn't do that before. It really goes to the speed that you've been talking about, but. I think we all know that nothing is easy when it comes to cancer. I mean, even when you're talking about some of these rapid changes and successes that we've seen. So what have been some of the biggest roadblocks preventing innovation in, in cancer? And how, how do you deal with those and how do you foresee dealing with them in the future? Because look, the challenges aren't going away. They're not going to go away. I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're going to get a lot of data from companies like ours and others that are beginning to do trials in various diseases, including cancer. So our drugs are now going into phase two and phase one trials. They're actually going into humans. So that's pretty exciting. All that data will come back and we'll see, you know, do our theories really hold water in the real world? The biggest challenge is cancer is so complex. So by the time you think you pinpoint a cancer, the cancer continues to evolve. And so it evolves differently in different people, different 
ethnicities, different ages, you know, different traits, different histories of prior treatment or lack of treatment. And so the challenge is that it's, you know, we can make a lot of um, theories about how it should work and we can narrow cast the type of patient it should work best in. The real world challenges I would say are, you know, finding those right patients in an adequate amount of time, making sure that the, what you think should be replicated biologically really happens in that individual and that person. And then third, of course, is trial competition, you know, because there are a lot of exciting new drugs out there, uh, making sure you can accrue the right patients and then model what their performance is going to be. But I'm actually excited about that because all that patient data comes back to us, right? So then we can, we can use that. And so one of the things that we've always talked about internally at Lantern is it's okay to do something manually the first time. It's totally great. That's how everything is done. But by the fourth time we do it, it better be automated. You've just underscored really how rapidly this is all changing and the potential that is out there. What are you most excited about for Lantern Pharma in terms of a breakthrough or AI and biotech in general for people that are out there waiting for those breakthroughs, for a relative, for themselves? Uh, what, what can we expect from AI in the future? I think you're gonna have the ability to launch many more powerful and more targeted medicines quicker. You know, people, you know, wait around for a, a drug for their subtype of a sarcoma or their ultra rare cancer, or no one's making a drug for their cancer. That's all going to change in the next few years because of companies like ours and also other companies. So I think that's very exciting that, you know, this stuff can actually go make a huge difference in thousands of people's lives. I think in the next 10 years, we're going to really wipe out a lot of these cancer uh, types and subtypes. So I think it's going to be, like I said, it's going to be a golden age in terms of AI's impact in, in medicine and in biotech. Oh, we do hope you're right. Uh, Pana, thank you so much for joining us. It's been fascinating to get to talk with you about what you all are doing um, at Lantern Pharma. Uh, I'm Jen Rogers. Thanks a lot.